Welcome to the Russell Brown Show. In this tutorial, where I'm going to be using Adobe Photoshop Touch, I'm going to talk about the basics of working with the warp feature. Now, it may seem simple, but I've got some tips and techniques to improve your projects. Okay, let's start with this incredibly good-looking character right here. Let's go right over to the More menu and find Warp right here. So I'm going to warp an image without making a selection, just to go over the basics. As you can see, a grid forms. But what are all these control points? Let's go through them. If you click on a corner point, for example, and drag it in, you can warp the proportions in a perspective fashion like this. But you can see that I can pull in, and I'm seeing the transparency behind it. Ah, but if we grab this point right here with the arrow on it, and I click and drag to the right, I can then skew it in this fashion. To the right, or by clicking and moving it to the left, I can do this sort of a warp, just like that. I'm hitting the Undo button here at the base, so I can go back in time and see my progressive moves. So that's what that control point's all about. Now here are the really interesting ones. Let's take a look at this one right here. The one with the multi-directional arrows on it. Watch as I move this. Notice that this is the real warping one. So you can really get those standard classic warping effects that you would only do to a photograph of someone like this. So you can warp those in. But check out this feature. When you have a square edge selection, the sides stay where they are, so none of the transparency appears. So keep that in mind. That's a really nice thing to remember. When you make a square edge selection, it doesn't distort the edges. Those are pinned near the edge. Check out this other point right in the middle. This doesn't warp the image. This moves the center point and lets you move your item around in this fashion. It maintains the warp, but you're merely moving that center point. So that's a basic overview of selecting the corner points, the multi-directional arrow for distortion, or the center point to reposition it. I'm going to cancel from that because now I want to go in on a project and show you some things you can do to really focus your warping. I have the marquee tool here set for the circular selection right here. I want to show you the difference between a circular selection and a standard square selection or rectangular selection. Notice here's a great tip and technique. I've made that selection, and I do not have my plus or minus or the add or subtract from the selection selected. I can now click right in the middle, and I can move my selection around just like this. So I want to make a distortion of that area. I can go back into my warp tool with the selection, so it will only warp that area. But check it out, what I said earlier about making a square selection versus this elliptical selection. Watch as I distort this this time. I'm going to distort this inward. Aha! If you distort this, you pull the edges in, and you start to see transparency because you had a non-rectangular or square edge selection. Keep that in mind. If you want to then blend those edges, you may want to make a square edge selection. So you can see the disadvantages of that. But if we go back in and warp this and we scale outward, there's no problem with the edges at all. No masking or adjustments. And that's the beauty of this. You want to be able to do things quickly and easily. So with a selection, let's go back out. Let's select our marquee selection tool right here. And let's make a selection of, for example, just the eye. I'm going to zoom in here. Again, just pinching right there. I'm going to make a selection of the eye, just like this. I want that big eyed, crazy look here. I make the selection. I make a warp. And remember, if I use this distortion tool, I can move this to the right, just like that. But we see that transparency. So we're going to get out of that one. So now we go in right into our multi-directional arrow there. Notice as I can that I can scale this around. I'm not revealing any of the transparency as I distort in or out. So again, repeating that fact about making a square edge selection, I click Done. I then zoom back out. 
and we can see our finished results. So there you go, a few tips and techniques for working with the new warp feature here in Photoshop Touch. Give it a try.